You know, the first thing we have to look at is, are there building requirements of any kind? You know, there are a lot of ghost towns in this part of the world. And, and what I mean by a ghost town is a developer comes in and they buy I don't know, a mile of beach, let's say, and they chop that mile of beach up into uh, a bunch of home sites. They put a road from one end to the other to stick some telephone poles, run some electric down to the other end, and a typical way to develop is to develop 100 feet wide on the beach by 200 feet deep, and that gives you about a half an acre lot with 100 feet of ocean front. And typically, you know, people sell those for anywhere between, say, 100, 150 to maybe four or five hundred thousand dollars in Costa Rica, and so. You've got these half acre ocean lots strung out for a mile, you know, 5,000 feet in a mile, 50 lots in a mile. So you have 50 lots running down the beach, you have 50 lots behind them, you have a road down the middle. And what we find all over Central America is that there's no homes. You might have an entire strip of lots that are all sold and there's not a house in sight. And I always like to ask at conferences, I always ask people, I say, all right, who out there on this big long stretch of beach wants to be the first house out there all by themselves? And maybe one hand goes up, but usually not. And if a hand goes up, I, I tease them, tease them, and if your hand went up, maybe you're a Robinson Caruso. But you know what? Most people aren't. Most people want neighbors, friends, activities, things to do. And these mile long stretches of beach that just simply have no homes, uh, are going to be ghost towns for many, many years, probably decades, because it takes a long time for the first people to come and decide they want to build a home out there all by themselves. Community is different. Community is very, very different. Another question that you have to really think about is what kind of design standards are in place. What's the zoning, in other words? What's the developer going to do with this property? What's the developer going to allow you to do with your property? And I think we see it most where somebody will come along and build a beautiful home on one of their lots, on the oceanfront lot. They build a beautiful half a million dollar house. It's gorgeous. It's spectacular. You know, Mediterranean style or Spanish colonial style or whatever it might be. And somebody comes along and builds the Hobbit house right next door. And you'd say, whoa, whoa, we can't do that. Well, why not? There are no architectural covenants and restrictions in many cases. There's no zoning, a municipal zoning. Somebody could actually open up a pig farm on their half acre next door, and there'd be nothing you could do about it because there's no zoning at the municipal level or the county level or, or you know, they don't call it county, but, but at that level. And so zoning is developer dependent. The developer has to lay out what's going to be allowed and then enforce it. And so you need to, and this goes to the third set of questions, which is know the developer. But here we're going to talk about those, those covenants and restrictions for own community because when you get the zoning that requires construction to a certain standard, to a certain design standard as well as engineering standard, um, you get to the point where you can actually have people, have homes, have community. Um, it's not a big long stretch of lots on the beach like we talked about. There's a build requirement and the build requirement has a certain standards associated with it. This is what it takes to build community and that's so important. If you're looking for community, you need to make sure that community will happen and can happen. And the developer is the person who designs it and enforces it. So make sure you ask that question.